All right, everyone. Uh, this is Dustin Cerny, uh, Director of Advanced Technology with FastTest. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to prevent spills and false failures with connection verification in our latest product line, uh, FastMate. Uh, we've added this technology to it. You've seen it before in our FE and FI products. Uh, and we've made some unique adjustments uh, to the module for FastMate specifically. A lot of things we've done are to simplify how to set it up and make it work in your application. Uh, and we'll go over a little bit of that today and talk about the problem statement, what we're solving, why that's important, go over the calibration process, how to set it up. I got a couple videos to show and we should wrap in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, so I'll get moving. Um, with FastMate products, we've seen a number of um, issues come up with short connects. Uh, it's a fairly common problem out in the field. Uh, getting these devices to properly seal, sometimes it looks like it's sealed, but it's not uh, in reality. And we'll see that in a video shortly. Uh, sometimes it's very hard for operators to tell that, uh, tell whether it's properly connected or not. And when that happens, you've got a short connect situation. And that can lead to a failed leak test, uh, which is a waste of time because uh, it will need to be retested, or a safety hazard with a, uh, you know, a spill in a functional test. Uh, we've seen oil test applications where oil starts spraying everywhere because the operator didn't fully connect this. Uh, and with connection verification, we certainly solved that problem. Cross-threading is another failure mode we see when they're not put in um, in, a, in the right orientation or if it's angled, uh, that will create a major leak path. Uh, and those fluid spills are a safety hazard, they're costly to clean up, and false failures are a significant waste of production time. Uh, so these are the core problems that we're solving with connection verification. Uh, so here is the new product that we've released uh, early this year. Uh, we've added our uh, circuit board module onto the back end of it, as you can see above the handle. We've also added a set screw that locks the handle in the whatever orientation, orientation the users prefer. Uh, we've seen that that also helps with our connection verification sensor to really create the accurate results. Of a good or uh, of a good actuation or not. So I'm going to jump to my webcam quick here and show it to you in action. Uh, hopefully everyone can see this still. In one second. And we've got our connector here. We've got our programming tool that ties in our discrete outputs, uh, really helps eliminate any necessary programming and gets people set up out of the box uh, in under a minute. But here I can show you we've got no LED response because we're not connected. And when I collapse the jaws and collets and insert it into the port, I've got my green LED that shows that I've got a good connection. Uh, so it's a pretty simple feature of we're telling or we're providing feedback that the connector did what it was supposed to. Uh, but if you do end up in a short connect situation, you can see um, I'm not fully connected. It's kind of hard to, to see that right in here. Uh, but you get no LED light. So it's an instant operator feedback that uh, the connector is not properly actuated. So the main benefits. Uh, that this provides is verifying all the tools are properly sealed prior to starting a leak test. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to lose a lot of production time due to false failures. And we, we uh, define a false failure as a leak test that occurs uh, and fails, even though the product isn't leaking itself. It has to, so the, you know, a false failure has to do with the setup, the sealing devices, the rigging, all of that comes into play and connection verification helps uh, improve first pass yield of leak test cells. Uh, so we're improving the safety, reliability, and lowering cost of quality for many leak test stations around the world. Uh, another big benefit to connection verification that it helps create standard work. Uh, 
And what this means is when you bring a new operator onto a line, they may have only had a little bit of training, um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they're expected to get up to speed rapidly. Uh, with connection verification, you can it, it's a great training aid to new operators. They have that instant feedback whether they've used this tool correctly or not. So we have seen a lot of a lot of interest in use cases around creating standard work and connection verification as a training aid. This does allow manufacturers to collect data to validate operators have made the right connection or made it in the right order to optimize the, the speed of all the connections. Uh, this is just another data point to collect for industry 4.0 systems, your manufacturing enterprise system. Uh, to log it and, and make sure that you're creating a quality product for your end customers and not shipping anything out the door that could have a hidden leak or, or a mass leak of some sort. And as I mentioned before, this really helps prevent any unsafe and costly spills during functional testing. Uh, I know FastMates are used in hydraulic testing, fluid, fluid power testing on off-road vehicles, uh, and they deal with considerable pressures. So when you have a higher pressure, you want that added safety benefit of knowing that you have a proper connection uh, before you introduce that pressure into your system. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly play a quick overview video uh, that highlights the technology and runs through a couple different connection scenarios. You can see it still maintains all the specifications of our standard FastMate product, up to 5,000 PSI. Um, it improves leak tests by verifying you have the connections before you start the leak test. Um, there are many benefits of doing so. And so here you can see a good connection, you get the LED feedback, and we're gonna grossly short connect it there. Obviously that can be a big problem. And here's one that's a little bit harder to notice. That's definitely a short connect and you didn't have that good LED response. Now here's a visual of a lot of the wasted effort uh, that you run into without using smart connection tools. So here's that graph again. Uh, with connection verification, we're saving a lot of production time. Uh, throughout the course of a year. Uh, many co customers run into a false failure due to a connection area once per day, if not more, uh, depending on how many parts they're producing. And when you have a false failure, failure you're gonna run your leak test, use all that time, it's gonna fail. Uh, the operator may have to adjust the seals, they'll end up rerunning the leak test, and then it passes, and they gotta go, you know, what happened there? Why did, why did this happen? This can cause engineering waste to troubleshoot what's going on. Uh, so there's a lot of wasted effort without using connection verification. And down below we've got a scenario where you're using connection verification uh, and let's say an operator actuates this device right onto uh, their product and they get that immediate feedback. So right away they'll know that, oh, I connected this properly or not. So Connection verification inherently saves a lot of time and money uh, by preventing those false failures and improving first pass yield. How much can that save uh, a manufacturer uh, is really dependent on their production lines and setup, uh, but we, have, we do know that uh, at a minimum, if you have one false failure per day at a retest time of one minute and your production cost is $100 a minute, that can add up to $25,000 a year. Uh, and when you get into more false failures and more expensive products, uh, we really see a compounding effect to the opportunity cost. Uh, there's a lot of time wasted when you're doing engine testing and connections aren't right, uh, when you have 15 connections that you've got to attach to an engine. Uh, so now I want to get into kind of how we um, set up this device and how it's used. Uh, what we're doing is actually measuring the piston travel of one of the internal components. Uh, we can see that going up through a zone that we've calibrated as good and then moving back down to its rest position. Uh, that's how it operates with the fast main. 
so I want to start with this video and then I'll kind of redo what we saw in the video live uh, with my demo setup. So we have a test piece, we have a programming tool, and our FastMan connector. Uh, and here's that same graph. Uh, what we've done to simplify calibration is automate where that A1 point is set. Uh, we, you have the connector at rest, and that's where we set and automatically set that distance between rest and what is a good connection. It's actually a very, very small distance that we're picking up, about 30 thousandths of an inch. Um, so we wanted to set that accurately for you so you didn't need to figure out how to do so. So it's a very, very simple way to calibrate this device. Um, the first step is to set the handle where you want it and set the set screw. The second step is to remove the main seal. Then you have the connector at rest and apply voltage to one of the pins or if you're using uh, one of the pins of the M8, or if you're using our programming tool, it's as simple as holding that button down for two seconds. Uh, and that's just stored that A1 point on the internal memory of this connector. To store the second point, which is our upper limit, we collapse the jaws a little bit so the, the collet edge lines up with that internal face, that blue ring right there. And then again, hold the programming tool button for two seconds, and that second limit, the upper limit, has been stored. You can see releasing, going through the zone, and as you release it, uh, you see a little rapid flashing light. Uh, and we'll get into what that means here next. Obviously, you want to reinstall the main seal uh, when you're putting it into actual production units. So the, the rapid blinking light is really a short connect alert. Uh, we found after some internal testing and some field trials that um, there is the potential of connecting uh, the device onto your product uh, at a, kind of the bottom limit of what we call good. And then when you introduce test pressure, uh, the piston may slide back out of range, which could be creating a leak path. And so we didn't want to give anyone a false sense of security. We wanted to provide more information to the operator. Uh, and that's where we added the blinking light. And you can see there that once pressure was applied, it turned blinking. Uh, and then we reactuated the connector and applied pressure. And you don't get the blinking light. So you fully inserted it. The idea here is that we want to fully insert the FastMate into the threaded port uh, to prevent any areas any errors. So I'm going to turn on the, the camera again, uh, make sure hopefully all of you can see this, and we're going to take our part, we're going to pull off the o-ring, which might be the hardest part of all of this. I tend to hold my connectors vertically uh, in this test stage. Make sure you can see that LED, and I hold the button for two seconds. That just stored the first port point in here, and then I'm going to collapse the collets and look at that edge there to make sure that collet is lined up with that interface, and hold my button again, and I've just calibrated this connector. So if I put the O-ring back on here. Actuate it onto the port. We've got our good response. Again, if I short connect it, you can see that rapidly blink, go through the zone. If I cross-threaded it, it's still, uh, the piston's out of range. It's above that upper limit. So pretty simple to set up. You can do it right out of the box in a minute if you get our programming tool. Otherwise, this can tie directly into a PLC, and it's as simple as applying 24 volts to uh, one of the pins on the M8.
So here's that graph. You can see the, the piston travel is moving up and back down into the different zones. Uh, at rest, your collets will look like what's on the left here. Uh, and in the bottom middle, you can see where that groove and that interface line up and what it looks like when you fully extended uh, the fast move. So we have a couple different signal output options with this technology. We've got basic discrete outputs with NPN and PMP signals. Uh, these are very simple to use. It's either an on or off. You get that LED feedback when it's in the zone or not. Uh, and you can set these up with, you know, very quickly and, and tie them into PLCs very easily. Uh, and then we also have an analog signal output, uh, which allows you to track that piston location uh, anywhere it is with the signal output. Uh, so th the interesting part is that you're starting to store limits within the PLC environment uh, and not on the device itself. Uh, and then this allows us to make the LED a, more of a programmable feature. Uh, you can turn that on or off at your will, uh, which can be used to alert an operator of which tool he should be grabbing for a specific application or a specific task. I know I've seen different setups where they've got six to eight of these devices, depending on which product's coming down the line and which size ports are on that product. Uh, and with the programmable LED, it allows you to tell that operator to pick up this specific size FastMate versus another. Uh, so that that really helps create that standard work I was talking about earlier uh, and improve the, you know, getting new operators up to speed faster. Uh, with analog, you can collect a lot of data over time. Um, it's pretty interesting to watch an actuation waveform uh, if you're at that level. Um, but the, the multiple out signal output options give you a lot of different flexibility depending on what type of uh, systems you're capable of working with. And right now, connection verification is only available for our FNL, our lever actuated connectors, and FNP versions of FastMate, which are the fully pneumatic automated uh, connectors. Here's the total system. We've talked about the programming tool a couple times. We have some cables available that tie all this together. Uh, and this system allows you to get set up in under a minute to help prevent the dangerous and costly functional test build. A uh, few of the common questions we've heard, what happens if the connector loses power? Uh, what happens to the limits? Those are stored on internal memory and retained even if the power is cycled, uh, so that does improve the safety of this device. Uh, what is the lead time? Well, we've taken our top eight runners of fast, uh, FastMate FNL products and FNP products. And we've made those available in two weeks for quantity uh, under five. Uh, so this allows you to get a unit fast, get up to speed, get validated, and see how it works in your application. Uh, all other sizes, we've got, well, I don't know, probably a thousand different variations of this product, so we couldn't stock them all, but all of the others will require a little bit longer lead time. How much does it cost to add connection verification to a FastMate? Well, our discrete modules, uh, you take the standard price of a FastMate and you add $449, uh, and the analog output, you're adding $549. Uh, a fairly modest increase to eliminate thousands of dollars of waste out of your production process. So I think it has a lot of great value uh, that this technology provides. Another common question we've heard is, can I retrofit an existing FastMate with the connection verification module? Uh, and at this time, no, you cannot do that. The, all We have you know tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these units out in, the, uh, in use today. And so they're all in different stages of their life cycle, and we cannot guarantee the results of connection, ver connection verification uh, with all of those different devices in the field. So right now it is uh, by an entire connector to get the new feature. Um, so if you're looking to get an on-site uh, demo of this new technology, please contact your local distributor or fast test representative uh, we've got different overview videos, the new calibration and setup video, and multiple brochures that go over how to use this new product, uh, along with an operating instructions. So I'm going to look uh, to see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions in the chat field. Uh, if you do have any, my contact information is right there. Please feel free to give me a shout.
whether that's through an email or phone call, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about this uh, exciting new technology and see how it would fit for your application. So thank you everyone for joining today. And I hope you have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.